All right, hello everybody. Today I'm gonna to be explaining how our team 315G uses ratchets on our robot, or at least for the past season, how we've used ratchets on our robot so that we can have a six motor drive and perform a lot of different functions with the two remaining motors that we have. We're using V5 and with the eight motor limit, this year it became pretty important to do motor sharing and because a lot of the functions in a flywheel robot are actually interrelated, you can find relationships between them. Lots of functions are only one way, for example, and lots of functions only need to operate uh, at certain times where other functions are not operating. You can actually find relationships between the different subsystems of the robot and then use ratchets to basically find a way to transfer power from your two remaining motors to the rest of the subsystems at the appropriate times. So what we have here is two flywheel motors and I'll go one by one. So this top flywheel motor here, it is connected to an axle which goes through, as you can see here, goes through the stack. And this gear right here is free to pivot around the axle that the motor is powering. So the way that the motor transfers power from the axle to the gear is through this ratchet over here. So you can see that there's a tiny sprocket there and on the right hand side there is a standoff, or sorry, um, a shaft collar with a screw going through it and it's rubber banded so that it actually pulls down on that screw so that uh, when it's uh, in one direction it actually slips and in the other direction it engages. Obviously I'm powering it the reverse way right now, I'm powering the gear itself but during normal operation of the robot the sprocket is what's spinning and uh, the gear, the, the 60 tooth gear is being powered. So. So if you look at the directions here, in order for the flywheel to spin forwards, uh, this small gear here, by the way, our flywheel is a 3000 RPM flywheel, 600 RPM motor cartridge, and a five to one external gear ratio. If you look closely here, you can see that um, when the sprocket spins backwards, as in the side closer to me goes downwards, only then, is the flywheel gear powered, only then the ratchet engages. Otherwise, this ratchet is slipping. So let me just repeat that one more time because it's pretty important. When this sprocket moves such that the side closer to me moves downwards, and that, remember that sprocket is directly connected to the motor, then the flywheel is powered by this top motor. Okay, so that's one ratchet. There are a total of five ratchets on this robot actually. So, um, the f I've only covered one of the functions. So when this top motor spins backwards, the ratchet connecting the sprocket to the 60 tooth gear here engages and the flywheel is powered. That's all I've gone over so far. So there's also another gear on that same axle that the motor powers. And this gear is directly connected to the axle. So it has a square metal insert. And as you can see, uh, I use a set of two more gears to transfer that motion all the way over here to the front. And so there's nothing special about this, it's just gears connected together. Uh, and this gear is directly linked to the axle. So therefore, this gear over here, this one, is always doing what this motor is doing. Uh, and also in the same direction specifically because there's an odd number of gears here. Okay. So, during when, when this flywheel is operating normally, when, when this motor is powering the flywheel, this gear is going to be spinning in this direction. And you notice here how, how nothing really happens because this ratchet is slipping. So, what happens is, uh, by the way, this whole setup here, uh, so the connection of the gears, and then this chain, all of that is to power the scraper. 
And the scraper, uh, the way this robot works is it's a one direction thing. It can only be powered in the downward direction and when it stops being powered, the rubber bends here on both sides, pull it back up. Okay, so the way this works is when this motor reverses direction, it stops powering the flywheel. So remember this ratchet here, it only transfers power from the sprocket to the gear if this motor is spinning backwards, otherwise it slips. That's the whole point of a ratchet. So when this motor starts spinning in the clockwise direction, this ratchet will start slipping. Uh, so it's not going to try to slow down the flywheel. The flywheel will continue to coast, but it won't be actively receiving power. So at the same time, the direction of this gear will also change so that it's spinning this way now. And now you notice how this ratchet starts to engage and power this gear here. And when that gear is powered, this chain also starts to move, which means the scraper is powered downwards. So that's how this motor serves the function of powering the flywheel and also powering the scraper here. All right. Um, so another feature that this robot has is an angle changing hood. So actually right here is the hood piece. It's a very, very subtle shift that causes the hood angle to change. So in the normal resting state of this robot, the, the hood is in its up position, which means the flywheel will shoot balls and hit the high flag from a distance of around two tiles. When the scraper gets powered down, the hood moves forward, and this leads to the balls being deflected towards the middle flag. And it's this tiny motion that's required in order for the hood to actually deflect the ball. Okay, so that's how the first motor does two different tasks, actually three if you count the hood changing. Now I'm going to move on to the second motor, which is right below it. Okay, so the second stack here, we have a pinion, and to the left of it, a gear that is always connected to the motor. And on the right side, we have a gear, a 62th gear, point to it. This gear is ratcheted, so it has a circular insert in it and its motion is determined by, or the, if, whether or not it's being powered is determined by the direction that the motor and the pinion are spinning in. So if the pinion is spinning away from me, meaning that the side closer to me is moving upwards, what happens is this gear gets powered such that it moves in this direction. And when that happens, the flywheel receives power again to spin forwards. And that's what's happening for most of the match. Now, what's special about this motor is it has another 60-tooth gear here. And that 60-tooth gear, uh, if we look on the other side, that gear is right here. Right here, actually. Um, that gear that gear's power, and that, that gear is directly connected to that uh, second motor right here. This gear's power gets directly transferred downwards to these intake rollers. Uh, and these intake rollers take the ball from this tray and pass them up uh, into the indexing area. And similarly, through chain uh, on this side of the robot, the power from those rollers is also transferred to our front rollers. So what I like to say is whatever this motor is doing, our intake rollers are doing. They're just directly connected, no ratchets in the way over there. Okay, so that's how our intake is powered. And that's also how this motor powers the flywheel. That's what I've gone over so far. Now the last remaining component is the indexer. So the way our indexer works is these rollers down here, uh, they kind of shove balls up into this holding area right over here with the limit switch and everything. And when, so two balls can get collected there. And while the collection is happening, our indexer actually stays stationary. And um, this, is, this is fine. We don't need the indexer to move as uh, these rollers below are actually doing all of the work. Only when we're shooting do I need the indexer 
to move up so that it can shoot the balls. Okay, so the way the indexer works is going back to this 60 tooth gear on the left, uh, the same one that's connected to the intake, that same 60 tooth gear is connected to another 60 tooth gear. And on the other side of this gear, let me see if I can get a better angle. Yeah, so right here, you have the fourth ratchet on this robot. And this fourth ratchet makes it so that when collecting all of the balls, uh, this, this 60 tooth gear is spinning this way so that ratchet is slipping. But when I want to fire, fire the balls that have been stored, I take this motor, reverse direction. So actually when I shoot the balls, you, you might notice that my intake rollers start spinning outwards because whatever this motor is doing, the intake is also doing. Now when this motor reverses direction, this ratchet here for the indexer starts to engage. And when this ratchet engages, the indexer moves up and whatever balls are stored in this area get shot out. Okay, so a few miscellaneous items. The way that the hood angle changer is connected to the scraper is through this polycarb piece right here. So when the scraper is in its resting position right here, the rubber bands are continuing to pull it backwards that way. And because those rubber bands are continuing to pull it backwards, it's exerting some pressure on this, on this polycarb piece, which is then linked through the C-channel, through this uh, one by L piece, and finally to the hood. So basically these rubber bands are indirectly, this rubber band specifically, which is pulling the scraper backwards. That is contributing to the hood remaining in its up position so that the ball shoots the high flag. So now when I power the scraper downwards, there's no longer any pressure on this polycarb piece and the hood is actually rubber banded downwards, these two rubber bands right here. And because the hood is rubber banded downwards, it naturally comes forward. It's just that these rubber bands are weaker than the rubber band that the scraper, used, uh, the scraper uses to pull itself up. So when it's in its resting position, it overpowers these hood rubber bands to push the hood backwards. And when that pressure is no longer there, the hood rubber bands pull the hood forwards. So that's how the hood works. And I also want to explain the fifth and final ratchet on the robot, which is also on the indexer actually. So let me get a good angle. It's this gear back here, uh, right here. This is a better view. So what this does is prevent the indexer for, from ever moving backwards. So during normal operation, just gravity and also friction from one of the axles and ratchets can lead to the indexer actually spinning downwards uh, if I don't add an extra protection, uh, protection. And the issue with the indexer spinning downwards is, remember that the bottom rollers try to push balls up into the indexing area. If the indexer is spinning downwards, it's going to add a lot more, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for those bottom rollers to push the ball upwards into the indexer area. So I wanted to stop the indexer from ever moving downwards um, so that indexing and everything would be a lot more effective. So what I did was I actually screwed in a 60 tooth gear to the metal piece so it would not move. Then this ratchet here, what it does is only allows the spear to rotate in this forward direction, but it catches whenever it tries to move backwards. And because this gear is screwed in, it will never, never allow this indexer to move backwards, only forwards. So that just made the indexing process a lot smoother and overall made the robot function a lot better. Another miscellaneous element regarding the whole setup here is this flywheel brake I have here. So with the double ratchet system on both of these motors, I can't ever use a motor and apply negative power to slow down the flywheel. So sometimes if I want to back court, for example, my ideal RPM is slightly less than what I have for front court. And if, if I want to do some cross court high flag shots, then the RPM is way lower. And the thing is, because this flywheel is really designed to coast well, 
the issue is it's hard to slow down because I can't ever apply reverse motor power, so it just keeps coasting on those ratchets. So the solution I came up with to change RPMs more effectively, to lower RPM, is to tie this actual physical brake to the scraper. So whenever I lower the scraper, you see how that brake comes and starts to rub with this pinion over here. So when that brake rubs with the pinion, uh, it really, when it's at high speeds, it really effectively slows down the flywheel. And actually here you can see how it slows down pretty fast compared to when the brake is not activated, how it takes a long time to coast to a stop. When that brake is active, it comes to a stop very quickly. So that brake is just activated through a simple rubber band and lever. Here when the scraper moves, that brake is engaged. So uh, just another element that I came up with in order to be able to change RPMs quickly. And this robot seems very complicated and it's certainly not the effort of just one or two people, but I think what really uh, allowed our club to grow this year was the collaboration between all of our different teams. For example, the design of our ratchets is uh, largely inspired by what 315X used for their ratchets. And actually they'll be making a separate video on all of the different types of ratchets specifically that they used and that I also uh, have been using on the robot. So previously I was actually using VEX ratchets and they showed me how to make these much more compact ratchets that work on these 60 tooth gears. So certainly a lot of this wouldn't be possible without help from other members of the club. So big thanks to everyone. That basically sums up how our team uses ratchets in order to accomplish all of these different functions, including scraping, hood changing, powering the flywheel with two motors most of the time, uh, indexing, and intaking. So all of those functions with two motors. And I guess that's really the power of sharing motors. If you notice, um, in going forward into the new game, Tower Takeover, if you notice that two motors uh, are performing similar tasks or you're, you only need one motor at a time, for example, really you can consider using ratchets in order to save an extra motor. And especially in a game like Turning Point where defense was such a big deal, I really think it was useful for us to have the, those extra motors on the drive, uh, on the drivetrain so that we could play a lot more aggressive defense and push people around. And uh, because of motor sharing through ratchets, we were able to do that. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any feedback, any comments, any questions uh, in the comments, and thanks for watching.